What's up guys, A Hate King here, bringing you some new Resident Evil news regarding the uh, Cold Veronica and Resident Evil 1 remakes, fan remakes, that were being developed and were supposed to come out this year I believe, but they have now been cancelled by Capcom. Capcom basically issued a CIS and uh, uh, a CND on on the Cold Veronica and Ori uh, fan remakes, basically, on the teams that are working on it. Assist and desist, is that what it means, CND? Um, yeah, assist and desist order from Capcom, basically, yeah. So, yeah, they can't, they're not allowed to make the remake anymore. This is very similar to what happened with the Resident Evil 2 fan remake, uh, which uh, Capcom, you know, cancelled because they were working on the actual remake uh, themselves. They even brought the team that was making that remake over to sort of give some advice and see what they what input they could get from them. But I think this is a different situation here because apparently uh, the fans that were making this game were demanding money to help them with the development or, or other aspects. And yeah, Capcom, you know, I never, I never understand these projects. I never understand why people waste their time doing this. Like, oh, we're going to remake this. We're going to make an old fan version. Yeah, it's going to be great. And it's like, you do realize it's going to get canceled. It's going to get shut down. Like, why do you waste your time doing this? And you wait and you throw all that work away. Uh, and obviously the team's going to be like, well, we're going to make our own game. And it's probably going to end up like Daymare, which was a pile of crap. So no, no offense to those guys, but that was not, that was not a good game. And yeah, it's just it's just a waste of time. It's just a waste of time, in my opinion. But um, this article from Rely on Horror, I'm just going to read this. Uh, all the way back in May of last year, we were reported on a fan-made remake of the 2000 Dreamcast classic Resident Evil Core Veronica, which has been shaping up rather nicely over the course of the last year and a half. Alongside it, that same team of fans was working on a rather impressive-looking remake, re-remake of Resident Evil 1, which, inclu which included entirely new content set before the events of the main game, allowing you to fully explore the RPD pre-outbreak and chat with your fellow stars operators before takeoff. See, that's actually pretty impressive. I never even thought about something like that. Like, if they did do a remake of the original Resident Evil 1 remake, that would be cool to have, where you have this prologue segment, where you're in the RPD, you get to interact with characters from the previous games. That would be awesome to do. Like, reading this right here, and I didn't even realize this, that's a pretty bloody splendid idea for a reason to do a remake, because for a remake, or another remake of Resident Evil 1 or even Zero, because you can add stuff like this in. Imagine, the game starts... And you're, you're either playing as Joe or Chris and you're interacting with each of the different stars members, even Bravo team. Hell, you, you interact with Chief Irons, perhaps, uh, and and maybe Marvin and maybe a cameo from Kevin from Outbreak. And then, and then you get, you know, you get to those points where Bravo team goes off and then you hear the like, oh, no, they've, they've crash landed. Like you get the news the next day. That would be kind of cool. Or you get introduced to Rebecca. She's coming in and, you know, it's, it's her first day and she's a rookie and she's getting introduced to all the team members there before she heads off. Just those interactions. That would be awesome. And reading that they had something like that planned, that is pretty bloody impressive. Uh, it's kind of a shame now reading that they cancelled this. That would have been very interesting to see how they would do that. But, um, yeah, uh, both projects were really interesting to watch grow as a fan and we were excited to see where they ultimately ended up. Sadly, it turns out that the way they're ending up is to end. Uh, in a video published to his personal YouTube, developer uh, Brian's Croft has announced that both projects have been given a, a, given a cease and detest order from Capcom. Yeah, the camera cut off again. I really hate this camera now. Uh, so yeah, sis and detest order from Capcom. So yeah, Capcom's cancellation of these projects, which obviously they are well within their rights to do, is somewhat surprising given how rarely they do this sort of thing. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it really? Uh, the most prominent example of Capcom taking down a project was 2015's RE2 Reborn, a fan-made remake of Resident Evil 2. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not rare though. We, we, they did this before. It was obvious they were going to do it again. However, that was a specific set of circumstances as the game was taken down so as to not conflict with Capcom's own official remake and the team behind RE2 Reborn was even invited to Capcom HQ to give their feedback on the official game. Yeah, which I mentioned. Capcom's already been clear that there are no plans for a Cold Veronica remake at this time, although they didn't say never. So it's not that. Some have speculated that it was due to the team taking donations from fans, but that's a lot different from outright selling the game. 
which would directly infringe on the copyright. The developers also claim it wasn't the reason Capcom gave them. There's every chance these just got too damn high profile for their own good. Part of a company choosing whether or not to act on protecting its copyright is whether or not the project could be mistaken for official content. If a fan project remains small enough, it probably wouldn't be worth their time to go after said project. The Code Veronica remake was getting reported on by the likes of IGN, so it was getting about as much medium coverage as an actual Resident Evil game. Regardless, it's a shame uh, to see so much hard work ultimately go to waste, but that's the gamble when attempting to make fan content with licensed media, I suppose. The developers have already made promises to keep developing new, a new game inspired by Koronika, but with an original story, so we can't wait to see it, etc, etc. Again, it's the same thing happening that happened with the guys who did Daymare. You know, they did their fan remake of RE2, it got cancelled, so they went and made Daymare, now they're doing like a prequel game. It's going to be the same case here. But um, uh, the, the fact that... Uh, it, it was donations they were asking donations they weren't telling people to buy their game it was a, it was donations uh so yeah that's a bit weird isn't it um but i i do i do think i agree with the part where it says that the game got a bit too good like in terms of getting a lot of coverage from from other gamers and news game new, gaming news uh, elements so maybe that's the case it was taken away from re4 remake you know oh we got this remake for cold Veronicon coming out we got this remake for re re1 um and it's taken away from re4 like that should be the spotlight that should be the focus so and uh, apparently apparently the developers even said that capcom you know the reason wasn't donations that was not the reason capcom gave them so what was the reason it's not officially known was it because of that you know guys stop this because you know it's getting a bit too much like you know we got to focus on our main actual game and you're taking away from that uh was that the main reason why i could see that being the case like a bit of jealousy perhaps yeah, no it, it makes sense to do that because you want to be able to sell your game and instead people are probably going to be uh, you know uh walking over to buy to get this free version instead right so it's not a good look um at the same time maybe they are planning to make a remake i mean this this should be enough I think for Capcom to realize that people want a remake of Cold Veronica and they and uh, that a remake a re remake of Resident Evil One with the RE engine would properly be awesome to do. So it's got to got it's got to have gotten them thinking right because what game are they going to be making next? I mean, what's coming out right? Hmm. Food for Ford. Food for Ford, because what is coming out in 2024? Are they secretly already rem making Remake 4? Is it something else, perhaps? Is it that uh, Outrage or Outbreak game that was supposed to be rumoured coming out? I'm just saying, Capcom has the chance to do two extra remakes. People want a Cold Veronica remake, and they could get on their butts and actually give us an RE1 re-remake, maybe with elements of RE0 in it as well, like combine that, like I've been saying, combine that, and boom, there's two remakes you can do, and then you can move on to RE5, and I don't know, maybe maybe two remakes or actual third-person shooter versions of the Fall of Umbrella and Operation Javier, maybe? There's a lot they can do, like, yeah, it's sort of going back to old games and that, but like, modernizing them? making them better like it all depends i guess on how re4 remake does if the game is really received like really 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 well and it actually is good and it actually pays respect to the original game but improves it then you know there's a there's a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of let's do this with with the other ones let's go back and do like this trilogy like the stars trilogy if you will with, or chris and versus wesker trilogy let's let's do it let's do re1 let's do cold Veronica, and then let's end it with re5 and maybe, maybe, big maybe, we get a remake of RE6 that's a tad bit better, perhaps, in the future. There's a lot they can do in the next 10 years. And, yeah, they, they honestly, they should just take it and do it. But uh, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where the future for the series lies after RE4 Remake. We know there's an RE9 coming. We know that. But what's after that? Like, what's going on? What's between those two games? Because I imagine there has to be something. Because I imagine RE9 is is a twenty is a twenty five game. It's a twenty twenty five game. We had we had RE7 in twenty seventeen, and then we had RE8 in twenty twenty one. So what? 18, 19, 20, 21. That's four years later. We got we got the next official sequel. So then then uh 2022 2023 2024 25 it makes sense right it makes sense that the next re game would be would be in 2025 and then there's the fact that again the anniversary of re1 
would be in 2026. It would be the, uh, is that the 30th? It would be the 30th, wouldn't it? 6, 16, yeah. It would be the 30th anniversary of Resident Evil. What better time than to get a remake out for that? Like, get a remake out for that. Like, yeah. Yeah, that could, that could work splendidly, actually. Like, ooh. Ooh. Just saying. It just... The timing adds up. The timing adds up. But uh, would they would they do a Cold Veronica remake next, and then an Ori One remake, or would it make more sense to do an Ori One remake and then a Cold Veronica game next, that can lead into Resident Evil Five? Because I feel like I feel like you cannot do a Resident Evil Five remake until you do a Cold Veronica remake first. And if they decide to do like, do you know what I mean? If they decide to do an Ori One remake, they have to do Cold Veronica next as well. Like, think Capcom, think, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on that. I hope you liked it. As always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.